heartbroken community farewells three young brothers. Kim Beasley brands his reshuffled team heavy hitters. And how heart surgery could help migraine sufferers. Good evening. Consumed by unbearable grief, a mother was forced to say goodbye to her three young sons today. Precious lives lost in a house fire at Wyong a fortnight ago. One mourner summed it up best. Losing one child is devastating. To lose three is unspeakable. Today, Lisa Ford said goodbye to her three little boys, mostly with tears. They came from across the Wyong Shire. Leanne Pearson, whose six-year-old daughter Madison was also killed in the fire. Her funeral was yesterday. Also there, the three fathers of seven-year-old Jethro, 15-month-old Harley and two-year-old George. Troy Gallette and Gary Wells were let out of prison for the funeral. Under the discreet but watchful eye of police, one by one they carried the tiny coffins into the Palmdale Chapel. Later, the deputy mayor spoke for the collective grief of a tight-knit community. When one of us hurts, we all hurt. And the last couple of weeks, we've all been hurting very badly for these, uh, these people. The ceremony ended with a gesture of life and hope. For 13-year-old Kira, who escaped the fire, hope that now she and her mother can begin the healing. The fire not only claimed four young lives, it destroyed virtually all of Lisa Ford's possessions. Public donations helped pay for this and yesterday's funeral. The little left over will go to the surviving children. They lost everything in the fire, their school books, their toys, their clothes. They lost much, much more. Brad Schmidt, National 9 News. The mystery continues to deepen surrounding the disappearance of baby Tegan, the newborn who vanished from a Sydney hospital nine years ago. Today, a former boyfriend of Tegan's mother told an inquest he had no idea she was pregnant. Now married and living in Ireland, Duncan Gillies dated Kelly Lane for four years in the 90s. In that time, she gave birth twice. He was the father to neither. The first child was adopted, the second Tegan disappeared two days after being born at Auburn Hospital. Supported by family today, the 33-year-old told the coroner he never suspected Lane would cheat on him. I wasn't skulking around in the dark to see if the woman I loved was having babies out the back door. He says he thought Kelly was on the pill in 1996 when Tegan was conceived, but remembers Lane wouldn't allow him to touch her stomach in bed because she claimed she was putting on weight. Mr Gillies told the coroner it was an understatement to describe his learning of the pregnancy as a hell of a shock, admitting in hindsight it's impossible to imagine why he didn't notice. A sentiment echoed by police when they interviewed Lane last year. I, I find it very hard to believe that a girl can have a number of children, have pregnancies and be living with a man and he doesn't know anything about this. Neither did Duncan's mother Julie Melville, a registered nurse who Miss Lane listed as her midwife for all of her pregnancies. Alison Langdon, National 9 News. Opposition leader Kim Beasley says his reshuffled front bench gives Labor a team of heavy hitters on economic policy. But the government is unimpressed and the way Mr Beasley went about making the changes has angered some in his own party. There was one bright new face in the team unveiled by Kim Beasley today. Peter Garrett, former Midnight Oil lead singer and Labor's star recruit at the last election. Peter brings a fresh perspective to Canberra and Canberra needs it. In a bit of classic typecasting... Let's give it back. Mr Garrett becomes Parliamentary Secretary for Reconciliation and the Arts. Yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled that I've been given this opportunity and it ties in very strongly uh, with the work and, and the music and, and the activity that I've had in the past. But at the Shadow Cabinet level, the Beasley reshuffle is not exactly daring. As predicted, Lindsay Tanner returning from the backbench to the finance portfolio that he held without making much of a splash before the 2001 election and Kevin Rudd adding trade to his foreign affairs responsibilities. Extra backing, according to the Labor leader, for the so-called roosters, Shadow Treasurer Wayne Swan and Industry and Industrial Relations spokesman Stephen Smith. I'm setting up a team of heavy hitters at the heart of the development of Labor's economic policy. Former leader Simon Crean and much-criticised immigration spokesman Laurie Ferguson have been demoted.
The Prime Minister, soon to have his own reshuffle following Mark Bale's election to replace John Anderson as National Party leader and Deputy Prime Minister, was not impressed by the Beasley effort. And you can reshuffle the people, you can expand the shadow ministry, but until you work out what you believe in and start arguing that to the Australian people, you're not going to make an impact. Laurie Oaks, National 9 News. As Chappelle Corby waits in jail, the people who are meant to be helping her continue to bicker among themselves. It comes after Australian QC Mark Trowell revealed that Chappelle's Bali defence team allegedly said that bribing judges may be her only hope. And this QC, I'd like to wring his bloody neck for sure. Put a sock in his gob. Chappelle's family now fear Bali judges are more likely to give Chappelle the death penalty just to prove they're not corrupt. Everyone needs to calm down, focus on Chappelle Corby. Chappelle's Jakarta-based lawyer will be making a formal complaint against Mr Trowell. Two more Australians have begun facing drug charges in Asia, this time two Sydney teenagers accused of trying to smuggle heroin out of Hong Kong. But unlike other recent cases, they've barely raised a blip on the media or political radar. On a monsoonal morning in Hong Kong, Two Australians accused drug smugglers arrive at Kowloon City Court. No Corby-style media crush. Few would have heard of 15-year-old Chris Vo, a former McDonald's worker, and 17-year-old Rachel Diaz. Both are from Sydney, faceless unknowns, arrested a week before the Bali Nine in this Hong Kong hotel, and allegedly about to swallow 114 heroin-filled condoms before a flight to Australia. At least the teenagers can be thankful they were not arrested on the communist mainland where the death penalty applies. Here in Hong Kong, the couple are now facing 20 years in jail. The pair looked bewildered as their case was adjourned to another court. Diaz looked teary. They said nothing, only yes, when the magistrate asked if they understood. Ten weeks in custody in Hong Kong in a foreign jurisdiction and you haven't got details of any, any of the evidence against you. That's how they're feeling. It's alleged Diaz and Vo stood to make $22,000 if they got the drugs to Australia. In Hong Kong, Mark Burroughs, National 9 News. It's almost six months since the Boxing Day tsunami, but in some parts of Asia, it looks like the massive wave struck only yesterday. Indonesia's Aceh region is one of many that remains in disarray. Half a year and hundreds of millions of dollars in aid later, and very little appears to have changed vast areas of Indonesia's Aceh province just as horrendous today as on Boxing Day. Here we're talking about 180,000 houses that have to be rebuilt and for that to happen you've got to clear away the debris. The tsunami pushed this ship and an enormous barge two kilometres inland. Today the only change, an enterprising shopkeeper operates from beneath the stranded wreckage. The size and scale of the debris is simply still unbelievable. Entire villages remain obliterated. Tens of thousands of people still totally dependent on emergency aid for the basics of life. But Indonesian officials promise none of the vast amounts of donated money will be diverted or wasted. We are going to spend the money uh, from the Australian people in a very wise way, a very efficient way. Arche is worst, but recovery is also slow in other countries hit by the tsunami. It's believed they found a treatment that could eradicate migraines for up to a third of sufferers after shifting focus from the head to the heart. Nancy Drew is a long a migraine sufferer, and until recently, doctors could offer no solutions. Excruciating, I'd be very sick to my stomach. I would just be incapacitated. It wasn't until she had a series of mild strokes that doctors discovered Nancy had a hole between the right and left sides of her heart, which allowed tiny blood clots to travel to her brain. It caused the strokes, and now doctors believe her migraines. And if that material goes to the brain, it can trigger um, a cascade of events in the brain that can lead to a migraine attack. The Nancy doctors sealed the hole using a collapsible mesh plug threaded through a vein in her leg and into the heart. It took 45 minutes in a local anaesthetic and she hasn't had a migraine since. I personally believe that this is going to be an uh, extraordinarily powerful treatment for patients who have migraine headache. Preliminary studies show half of all sufferers who've had the procedure reported their migraines stopped once and for all. 
the doctors say more research needs to be done before this can be declared a cure. In the United States, Christine Spiteri, National 9 News. Australia's most prestigious literary award has been handed to Andrew McGahn for his novel The White Earth about life in rural Queensland. The Miles Franklin Award is worth $42,000. In the news ahead, why bus drivers want bikes banned from city express lanes? And graduation day for Prince William and his girlfriend. In finance, record high oil prices overnight caused a sell-off on the share market. The banks and retailers fell. BHP Billiton lost three cents as it battles the tax office over a $1 billion bill. Oil stocks were the only improvers. The All Lords down 21 points. The Aussie dollar is firmer, buying 77.17 US cents. High speed and wet weather proved a tragic combination for a 25-year-old man who died in this crash in Sydney's north early this morning. The collision with a power pole at St Ives split the Commodore in two and sent wreckage flying more than 50 metres. Police are puzzled about how this car managed to overturn on the M2 this morning. It didn't collide with another vehicle, yet somehow managed to flip. A woman was slightly injured. Those daring, or some would even say reckless courier cyclists, sure have their share of critics. The latest, our city's bus drivers. They're so fed up at being held up, they now want all push bikes banned from designated bus lanes. Bus drivers say they're a menace. Bike riders ambling along city roads, in and out of bus lanes. They are a hazard and they're very hard to see, they're very hard to hear. Not surprisingly, the call to ban cyclists from riding in bus lanes has sparked a war of words. They are a problem. Push bikes are just not up to the traffic speed that is required to move people in and out of the city. I hate to think that the safety of cyclists is uh, again put to the side for the benefit of, uh, of a bus just going at a fraction quicker. The cyclists say kicking them out of bus lanes will simply force them into the traffic in other lanes and they've rubbish suggestions they hold up motorists, dismissing that criticism as jealousy. I think most drivers get frustrated because we're actually making more progress than them. The roads minister says he is open to the idea. Clearly there's a problem if you um, have bikes slowing down the whole system. It does reduce the efficiency of the system. But while he says his door is open to discuss the concerns of bus drivers, he says talk of a blanket ban is premature. Nigel Blunden, National 9 News. An 80-year-old American racist will see out the rest of his life in jail, sentenced to 60 years for ordering the murders of three civil rights workers in 1964. Edgar Ray Killen was convicted two days ago. The judge said he had to impose the full penalty regardless of Killen's age. In Iraq, eight car bombs over one 12-hour period have killed 33 people. As the American Congress assesses progress in the war, Analysis by the political opposition we are was now grim. In a seemingly intractable quagmire, our troops are dying, and there really is no end in sight. The idea that what's happening over there is a quagmire is so fundamentally inconsistent with the facts. Two key facts America has suffered 1,725 military deaths. And the CIA is concerned that fanatics are using Iraq as a training ground for a wider holy war. Showing poor taste as far as many Australians are concerned, a Japanese fast food chain is now offering hamburgers made from the meat of minke whales. Costing $4.50, the chain says the meat tastes like a cross between beef and tuna. Prince William is stepping out into what he says at Wimbledon, where Cam Lakey Hewitt is in action on centre court tonight. Mark, he's the last Australian standing after the defeats to Wayne Arthurs and Nicole Pratt. Also, Andrew Johns back for Newcastle, but will he be made the Blues captain? And Andrew Simons blasts back with a man Andrew of the Simons match performance. A boost tonight for the Roosters with Chris Flannery and Michael Crocker pass fit to play in the crucial clash against Parramatta. Meantime, with New South Wales skipper Danny Baderas in severe doubt for the state of origin decider, blue selectors will be praying Andrew Johns gets through Newcastle's clash with Penrith tomorrow night. 
Johns is making his first appearance since injuring his neck in the Blues' stunning victory in Game 2. Rugged up before his trip to the foot of the mountains, Andrew Johns preparing for yet another comeback with the Knights desperate for their first win. You now I still feel the tiniest little bit of discomfort when I wake up in the mornings, but it probably goes with the cold weather. If he escapes unharmed, he'll be Just named as Blues skipper on Monday if Danny Badiris is ruled out. I'd love Benji to be there playing and I think he'll be right. I'm sure he'll, he'll come through with this foot injury and uh, he, he deserves to get there and lift the trophy if, if we win. Another player thinking Origin, the Dragons' Trent Barrett, thrown a lifeline by selectors saying he will be considered. So I'd love to play in the third Origin, but you know it's going to make it really hard if I don't play this week. The Raiders' Jason Smith has a strong chance of making an early return from a knee injury against the Cowboys tomorrow. Tonight, when the Eels meet the Roosters, Origin hopeful Eric Groth will aim to show his former coach, Ricky Stewart, just how strong he is between the ears as well as on the field. Ricky was all about mental toughness and... It's something I, I really didn't have in my game and he just taught me through training and a lot of things we did there um, how to be a bit more mental, mental, mentally tough. And some good news, footy show host Paul Fatty Vorton was discharged from hospital this morning after suffering a severe concussion on Tuesday. Danny Widler, National 9 News. Andrew Simons has returned from a two-match suspension to guide Australia to its first victory of the one-day cricket series against England in Durham. Simon scored 73 from 81 balls in Australia's total of five for 266. After losing early wickets, England was never in the hunt. The tourists home by 57 runs. Relief just to be back in the team. A man of the match performance was an added bonus for Simons, whose late night antics led to the most sobering week of his career. It's the worst I've ever felt um, sitting out that particular day. Um, I felt like I had me sort of insides ripped out. And what a way to make amends. Simon's playing the lead role in a 142-run partnership with Damien Martin. Well, he's got underneath that and he's hit that superbly. He's 73, the backbone of Australia's innings. He's flat and fast. Reportedly spooked by stories of ghosts at Australia's 700-year-old hotel, Shane Watson was forced to confront his demons. Having a bit of fun. The ghosts of England's cricket past were there for all to see as Brett Lee and Glenn McGrath blasted through the top order. Oh, Collingwood's gone, second ball. Simon's chipped in to remove the dangerous Kevin Peterson. It, out. it is out. A late innings cameo from Darren Goff, never likely to prevent Australia's drought-breaking victory. Chris Hodgkinson, National 9 News. Here at Wimbledon, Leighton Hewitt takes on American Justin Gimmelstub tonight as Australia's sole survivor at the championships. There were some big upsets overnight with Britain's Tim Henman and French Open champion Raphael Nadal crashing out. Of the Aussies, Nicole Pratt lost in straight sets and Wayne Arthurs was eliminated after a marathon five-setter. It was Wayne's world going by the number of Arthurs supporters, cheering on the big-hitting Australian who fired down 38 aces. At two sets to one, the veteran campaigner looked to be in control. Oh, good court coverage by Arthurs. But the fourth went to a tie break and the German barged his way into the match. Oh, he's missed it. The umpire had to warn the noisy Australian fans. But they spurred Arthurs on. Well played. The German and the Australian were in the trenches. The final set, a war of attrition, which it seemed would never end. Well played. After four hours and ten minutes, Pop just had more puff. Well, it's called long. The German will play Russian Dmitry Tursunov, who disappointed locals by knocking out Tim Henman. But their sadness was quickly forgotten when Scottish teenager Andy Murray defeated Radek Stepanek. Nicole Pratt was our last hope in the women's, and the 32-year-old took it up to Venus Williams. But she couldn't repeat her first round victory, her only one here in the past seven years. Feisty Belgium, 15-year-old Cecil Krachenchiva learnt to speak English from Spice Girl records. She said she wanted to kick Maria Sharapova's butt. Instead, she was taught a lesson in respect, taking just one game. Mark at 8.30 tonight, the Parramatta and the Roosters, followed by, of course, Wimbledon, and I can tell you Leighton Hewitt is first up on centre court. OK, I'll try and get your footy tips in, mate. <laughs> Good on you, thank you.
After the break, Janie Seal with all the weekend weather details. Tonight, the battling mother with eight children forced to live in tents because bureaucrats have failed them, plus the wedding cameraman who turns dream days into disasters. Good evening. It's now 15 degrees after a cold and soggy end to the week. We warmed up to 18, which is one over the average. And last night was certainly a wild one with some welcome rain, which is still falling. Now, we had about 10 millimetres over Warragamba Dam, but to make a difference, we actually need about 40 millimetres a day for at least seven days straight, which doesn't look that promising. It was certainly grey skies for most areas today. 17 at Parramatta, 10 at Katoomba, where you received six millimetres of the wet stuff. Now, this cloud swirling around the east is from a low pressure system which is starting to head out to sea still blowing in those southerly winds and showers right along the coast not much going on with this cloud in south australia just yet in fact mostly dry for the rest of our dehydrated country a wet and windy saturday right along the new south wales and southern queensland coast tomorrow waking up frosty and cold underneath this high and a few showers starting to form along the west coast of south australia the usual chill in the air for our nation's capital tomorrow with a top of 13. melbourne and hobart will be free of rain but cold this weekend adelaide may see a few showers on sunday tomorrow's temperature 16 degrees fine for darwin and brizzy fog and frost for the southern slopes and ranges tomorrow morning for New South Wales. South easterly winds from the high will actually transport a few more showers along the coast, gradually clearing from the south. Now let's have a look at the next couple of days. In fact, Sydney tomorrow, a few morning showers and we are looking at seas quite choppy. Surfers, the three to four foot swell should drop with moderate southeasters. High tide will roll in at about 11 a.m. In fact, 11 p.m. as well. The sun will come up just after 7 a.m. We have a few showers for most of us tomorrow, but further west around Katoomba, we should see a little more blue sky with those temperatures rolling up to around 12 degrees. Hold on to your brollies this weekend with a few showers forecast. Now, they should land mainly near the coastal suburbs with maximum temperatures around 17 to 18 degrees. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. And Mark, see you Monday. Will do. Thanks, Janie. If you have a story to tell, you can contact us by going to our website at 9msn.com.au slash news, then click on News Tips. I'm Mark Ferguson, that's National 9 News for this Friday. Hope you have a great weekend. Here's Ellen Fanning with The Current Affair. Thanks and welcome to A Current Affair. What's a wedding without a video to remind the bride and groom of their dream day? But imagine how you'd feel if the video makes it look more like a disaster. We trusted you and basically you have turned the most special day of our lives into an absolute nightmare. Also tonight, the battling mum with eight kids left homeless because of bureaucratic red tape. And from gardening personality to gallivanting author who's admitted to two affairs, somehow Mary Moody's marriage survived it all. the man who makes money out of what should be the happiest day in other people's lives. He charges up to $2,000 to compile a video of their weddings, but instead of precious memories, some couples feel shattered when they finally get to see the tape. Others are just left waiting. I don't think I'd want to run into him in the street. <laughs> no. Nah. 